hey guys, what's happening? So, got our 3D printer to fix here. And this is actually kind of an unusual printer. Um, they didn't make these very long. And uh, I'd actually worked on, I made our video about it, the uh, CR10 S Pro. Whereas this is, uh, this is obviously bigger than a typical CR10, which is 300 by 300. This is not exactly a, like the original CR10s that came out, like the S5 was 500 millimeter by 500 millimeter. The S4 was 400 by 400. Whereas this is 470 by 470. Um, I haven't had, I have no clue what's wrong with this thing. The guy just said basically it's getting no power. Um, it must be the version two uh, because it actually has the BL touch you can't see in there. Whereas the version one actually had a uh, capacitive sensor. Um, Bowden set up. Um, but I, like I said, I don't know anything about this printer. I don't know what's wrong with it. But the other CR10S Pro I worked on. It was unusual. It was like one of the first color touchscreens that came out. Um, it was running Trinamic drivers with an 8-bit board, and the and firmware was almost impossible to find. It was, it was a version 1 of the uh, of the device. So I'm guessing, because these things almost look identical, just the layout and everything here, you know, I'm guessing it's probably going to be the same thing. 8-bit board uh, with Trinamic drivers. Uh, well, Creality calls them the silent drivers. Um... All right, so, I mean, this was, I think this is like a, this printer was over $1,000. Um, the cool thing is, like, it, it came with a lot of the issues, that solved a lot of the issues that plagued the first version, you know, of the S5. Uh, being the bed being so big, they put these support brackets, came with the support brackets. Um, but one of the cool things is, I don't know if you can see this, but one of the issues originally with the S5 was that because the bed is so heavy, right, you know, bouncing around everywhere is the uh, it had a single belt right and the, the belt would act as like a rubber band and it would actually it would actually uh, translate the uh, rubber band effect into your parts like ghosting and stuff you know corners would be kind of out around kind of messed up um, so yeah double belt so that's cool to see that so definitely has some of the cool features I mean like, like I said out of the box it has double belts BL touch um, you know, auto leveling sensor. Yeah, it's already has the support brackets. You know, it still runs the typical like uh, the Creality wheel design, which I hate. Um, I mean, it works okay, but it's not like linear rail, like linear rails or something like that. But uh, <clears throat> so I gotta plug this in. He says the thing is, so you plug it in, and it gets zero power. So nothing on the screen. So I'm suspecting either the board or the power supply. So we'll grab a, a power plug real quick, and we'll take a look at it. Yeah, what kind of sucks is because this printer's so big, it won't even fit on my workbench. So I have to work on a different area. It's funny, I've been working on a lot of these really massive printers lately, you know, these S5s. I've mean, designed a couple of like, undermount kits and stuff for them. Um, let's see what happens with this thing. Well, I didn't hear a pop. So sometimes, like in the power supply, I'll hear like a pop, like as soon as you get power, like, like, a, like the spark in the... Okay, so I'm getting a fan. Okay, but no LCD. Now, these color touchscreens, they don't interface directly with Marlin. They actually run more like over a UART control. They connect with the motherboard via UART. Um, so they're not interfacing directly with the, with the firmware. It's like its own separate computer, its own ARM processor and everything. So uh, I gotta make sure the thing's getting power. At this point, I don't know if it's the main board or um, I gotta check the wire and make sure the main board's getting the 12 or 24 volts. Um, yeah, what's funny is I've seen so many different Creality printers now that are all kind of wired differently, and I've seen a progression of six or seven years of printers. Yeah, and they're interesting thing about this time period of these printers coming out. And this is probably like two or three years old, and. Uh, the, the ribbon cable. Um, I don't see this very much on the the newer printers. They, I think they kind of phase this out. Um, you know, this long, long ID cable. Well, it looks like an ID cable from a computer. Um, it's just that it's... Uh, it, they kind of... I, think, I feel like the newer printers come out, they went back to the other wiring. This is uh, actually pretty interesting. Um, this is the first Creality printer I've seen that had two power supplies. 
Um, you know, actually, I've made several videos about me converting these uh, the original Sierra 10 S5 to an AC heated bed. You know, like like you know, no longer using like the the, the DC power supply and going straight off AC mains uh, with a uh, solid state relay. So let's take a look at this thing. So we have main power supply, 24 volt. All right, and that looks like a secondary 24 volt power supply. I'm gonna need my stronger glasses. It looks like 24 volt here. So um, I'm guessing they have this one dedicated for the main, the, the bed here. So the larger one probably most likely would be for the bed. You probably have a MOSFET. Yeah, this is your, this is your your heated bed MOSFET. Um, make sure it's DC supplied, not mains. I gotta make sure the. Okay, so it's, it's a DC powered 24 volt bed. All right, so mains come in here. Um, all right, so I'm gonna grab my multimeter, and what I want to do is make sure I'm gonna check the output because this is actually with the smaller ones actually powering the board, which I suspected. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take a here. I'm gonna take a voltage measurement here, make sure I'm getting 24 volt. Yeah, you know, one thing I wish Corrali would start doing is using a different color for the mains. Um, just because, so people aren't confused. I mean, I'm not going to, I won't, I won't get confused, but, you know, the mains are red and green, or, you know, uh, typically the black would be uh, in this line. They have a, I mean, normally here, black would be line and uh, white would be uh, neutral for 110 system, but. So I wish they would kind of emulate that, black and white or something like that, so you can differentiate the DC voltage from the AC voltage. So if you're not familiar with this stuff and you put the wrong thing in there, poof. Uh, it just makes it easier so you know what you're, what you're looking at. All right, so before I do a quick measurement on voltage, uh, remember what I said earlier, like this thing actually is not, like doesn't interface directly with the firmware in the board. Like if you're running this old style, like the ribbon connector here, uh, the A-pin ribbon connector, that would interface directly with Marlin, like the original, like say, like Ender 3 Pro screen, the black and white screen. Um, but this actually owns like a, it's called TFT. Um, it's basically its own mini computer, sends G code commands, and uh, it has its own ARM processor and stuff. But it doesn't interface directly with Marlin. So, um, all right, let's do a quick voltage test here. Put this in DC. Have my multimeter down here. And let's see if I can do this with uh, one hand. So what I'm looking for is at the bed. Okay, so I'm getting 24 volts at the bed right here. And so I'm getting power. So. It's either going to be the board or the screen. Yeah, good luck trying to find one of these screens. <laughs> like I said, they only made this printer for like you know hardly any time at all. So um, let's see. Is that a okay? Like I suspected, I think it's an eight-bit board, like a Mega Twenty-Five Sixty. Um, most likely they try dynamic drivers. So. Um, I might, I'm going to hook this up to my computer and see if I can interface with it. Um, you know, run some G-code commands with, with Pronterface or something. It's even just, even responds to the computer. So, if you're not familiar with these Crowley boards, this is an unusual board. Um, they didn't, it's from, what, 2018, if you can see that in there. I'm trying to get it light where you can see it. Um, okay, so it does actually have two LCD connectors back here. So the L LCD connectors are back there. I'm not sure what that one is. But since they made a bunch of use of ribbon cables. Wow. That's all that. And this MOSFET does. Ooh, there we go. Look at that thing. I think that's a MOSFET. See that right there? It's a burnt chip. Um... This board is, I don't know, this might be hard to find, but I'm going to check the fuses, too. Um, I mean, I, I mean, all of a sudden, we just figure out what's wrong with the board. 
I'm um, still confirming their damage. Don't know if I can, uh, I'm gonna check some of my other Crowley boards and see if I can make them desolder the, whatever that is. Um, cool thing is at least not all the numbers are gone so I can at least see kind of what it is. Um, check those fuses too, see where it says F, F4 and F3? I'm gonna check those too. Here's a closer look at that fried chip. Hope you can see it in the thing there. Well, this is actually why I keep the old Corality boards. Um, yeah, I keep them for spare parts, you know, fuses, whatever, you know. So there's, I think I can reuse that chip right there, desolder it and put it on there. Um, like normally I would just tell them to get a whole different board, but um, this board is so unique that it might be worth saving, so. All right, so it's been a, over a month since I started making this video. Yeah, it was really difficult finding this board. Uh, can't remember where I left off in the last video. But um, yeah, the one with the the floppy connector, not floppy connector, but the uh, ribbon cable. It, it's really hard to find. So I guess this guy, actually, the owner of the printer, actually found it in some group, like uh, some 3D printer group. Um, all right, so I'm going to tear it down and swap it out. All right, so I'm a little nervous about powering this board on. Um, just because I really don't know if it was another component that actually caused this board to fail. Like if I have a shorted LCD, shorted BL touch, shorted MOSFET, something could, that have kind of overloaded that uh, voltage regulator. I guess we'll try. Let's sit back here. All right. <laughs> No LCD though. Well, if you're wondering why I even actually mentioned uh, firmware, it's because when you create your firmware, you define the processor pins in the firmware. So if this was actually like say like a like a stock Ender three or something like that, you could d you define these pins in Marlin the software. Um, so I'm thinking this thing is not defined right in Marlin. That's why that I thought firmware. Alright, so before I get too involved in this printer, I want to make sure the board even, I can connect with the face, or if I even get like a USB detection. Yeah, I don't hear anything. I'll try a different USB cable too, but... And also it's a failed bootloader. Yeah, it's a... Uh, I some some Creality boards didn't actually have a bootloader. So this could be one of the older, hopefully... Um, yeah, some of the early versions of Creality boards didn't have a bootloader on them. So you had a flash of bootloader. That was like five years ago, so I don't think... I guess it's been a while. I mean, 30, 32 bits has been out for a while. Well, one thing I noticed is I didn't get BL touch power. So, uh, this thing usually powers... This is usually powered by a 5-volt rail here. The LCD. And BL Touch is your typically 5 volt rail. That's weird. Sometimes I don't know if you guys want to see all the troubleshooting steps. So, um, there, there might be a short in this 5 volt rail. Let's see. I'm mainly worried about this LED right there. Alright. And we have sort of activity again, right? Where I plug in the LCD. Fires on. Lights go out. All right, so I'm going to keep this thing unplugged. So this thing could have gotten taken out too with the bad board. Yeah, because I, mean, I thought there was something wrong with the 5 volt rail. Hopefully the BL Touch didn't get taken out too. Um, because normally when the power, power, BL Touch gets power, I should hear like, like a clicking sound. Oh, got some light kind of right there for a second. And so I did connect Proner face. Now, if this is actually was like a CR10 Pro, because I use the same motherboard on a CR10 Pro, version one and version two. Um, my issue is, uh, uh, would be if I homed it, if it was programmed for a CR10 
the smaller version. I think the, the Sierra 10 Max. Um, because it's, it's a smaller bed, it would home to the center here. So instead of being the center in the, the main bed, it would center out probably around here. Because it's a 300 by 300 bed, and this is like almost 500 by 500. Alright, let's take a look. Yeah, it sucks about this printer because it's so big I can't. I might just have to put it on the ground. I don't want to do a humming cycle. I might just flip it around. Um, yeah, I might have to put it on the ground because I want to make sure I want to see where, what it's programmed at. Um, that, like I said, if it's a version 1, version 2, and if it's a proximity sensor or VL Touch programmed. Alright. Um, so I'm doing a BL test self test and it's not activating. Plus I see how it's flickering right there. That makes me think that the pin assignment is not set up correctly in Marlin. So, so either the 5 volt rail took out this LCD or the BL touch is taken out too. So I'm gonna take that out as a precaution. I don't want to burn that out too. So I'm gonna use X loader to load it. It's a 2560, mega 2560. So if you're wondering, these 3D printer boards originally were based on Arduino. Um, downloads and it's here to the next firmware. And update. As you can see, it's updating here. So you're not going to see any activity in the background. Just be patient. Okay. Uploaded. Reset. Oh yeah, this will be if it's working correctly. This will uh, this the five volt will also power too. See that right there. So make sure you fully power it off. Yeah. Right, let me try a G twenty eight command. So I just flipped it around here a little bit. Actually, I don't even, I don't even think it's actually going to work. Okay. Now, if this is a correct firmware, it's going to come back and home right here in the center. But I'm probably going to have to turn the power off. I don't think the BL touch is going to work. Let's see. I have the BL touch right there. I have, I have the thing down. When I put power on this, that thing should go back up. So that makes me think that I'm getting servo, but I'm not getting power. Alright, so I've set up over like probably 30 BL touches. This is actually a Sierra Touch, Crowley's version of it. I do actually like the Sierra Touch better. Uh, I do actually like the metal probe. Um, so it's supposed to usually do like a self test when you first turn it on, and this thing is not doing it. So I'm going to move it over here just to, just to see. Uh, I'm going to pull my wire out and put this one on, and we'll test it. That way I can actually verify if it's actually a bad BL Touch. Alright, let's give this a go. Power it. Yeah, so obviously that should be turning on and powering up and down. No movement. Oh, that's kind of a bummer, man. So. Man, that board that exploded the voltage regulator uh, took out the screen and the BL touch. Like I said, everything on the 5 volt rail got taken out. All right, so here's our closer look at the LCD. Like I said, this is even kind of rare, too. I mean, I never see these things. Um, so it's a 5-volt rail. I wonder if it's the... Uh, I'll check the diodes on this thing. I mean, normally I shouldn't go in this much, you know. I'm not going to be building the customer this much money. But I just like to figure out what's wrong with these things. <clears throat> if I can fix it easily, that'd be cool. But... Um, yeah, I might hook up to my Benz power supply here. See if I'm gonna apply five volts to it and see what happens. You know, then if I get a heavy load on here, then I'll know if there's something wrong with this thing. All right, guys. So that's the end of the video for this.
Crowley SCR10 Max. So we've been trying to find the LCD for it. I mean, it's just it's so difficult finding the parts of this thing. So uh, we're going to be converting this to Clipper, and I'll make another video about that with the uh, the Creality Sonic Pad. I'll make another video about that. This is a CR uh, CR attached. So like when the five when the five volt rail blew out of the board, uh, SKR Picos. I might not use that just because of ribbon cable, but when the board blew out, it took out the screen, the deal touch, and everything. So, yeah, it's probably the worst I've seen it blow out, take out all the components on the 5 volt rail. But, I mean, in the end, he'll be getting a better printer, though. So, he'll be getting a newer, modern clipper. Um, especially for a printer this big, you know? I mean, just being able to schematics, uh, being able to control jerk and stuff in this big uh, Y-axis will definitely be a huge improvement, so. Alright, so it's a fix, because the, the printer works, it's just the BL touch doesn't work, no screen, but the printer does work, so. Alright, so it is a fix, but it's not a fix.